Guys, today we're going to be reacting to episode 2 of Dun to Dawn. That's a space alien, ain't it? Uh, the last episode was really good. There's so much to talk about. I'm going to go over a brief recap of the last episode. So first off, we start with the episode meeting ISA. And ISA ends up dealing a nasty kick to, I guess, her ex-boyfriend. Uh, the one that she had just broken up with. And she goes into class, breaks the fourth wall, which I actually really like. Definitely a different change. Like I said in the last episode's intro discussion, I feel like I've only been watching MAPPA. So it is kind of nice. Well, again, I'm not complaining though, because MAPPA kills it absolutely nails their animation and everything about it i'm not complaining but i have watched vinland saga attack on titan and jujutsu kaisen which are all mappa and i'm a huge fan of this animation change up and completely different vibe there is probably nothing i've seen that's kind of like this it's definitely more abstract definitely different um i'll get to that in a second but first i'm going to talk about our second character ken uh ken is reading his conspiracy book which I'm, I'm also a fan of i do love a good conspiracy theory um i wouldn't say that i'm a conspiracy theorist but i do love reading what people come up with but isa comes in and stops bullies from throwing stuff at ken ken ends up venting his conspiracy theories to isa she basically says that he's a loser has no friends and uh, he gets really bummed out he basically challenges her hey you should go find the aliens and she says hey you should go find a ghost because that's what i believe in funny enough ken doesn't believe in ghosts despite all the things that he does believe in and they both go to two separate haunted locations or you know both locations where they have claimed to have seen what they are looking for so so ken ends up going to a tunnel that is cursed by a ghost and isa ends up going to a building that apparently has aliens which she does find unfortunately but i can definitely tell that this is kind of going to be a show where the abstract is really pushed. Uh, once Ken had transformed into Turbo Granny and had gone through the phone and bit a guy's crotch, like that sentence alone, I feel like I I should have like, <laughs> sorry, my brain is broken. Um, <laughs> on this channel, I have come up with so many rational thoughts and theories, and yet I just said as Ken transformed into Turbo Granny, crawling through a phone and bit an alien's crotch, <laughs> like. Bro, yeah, this show is just crazy, but there is one thing that this show absolutely nails, one thing that I'm a huge fan of, one thing that, like, is really big for me when watching a show is color. Now, granted, I could let it slide, like, Attack on Titan or Vinland Saga, where the story is just peak, but for me, I love color theory, and I love when a show nails color and shading and, and glow, and I really feel like this last episode absolutely smashed it. There was definitely a few scenes, especially there towards the end where the action started to pick up, where the colors really meshed well and balanced out. Uh, yeah, the green with the blue, the red with the blue, the way that the shading and the glow kind of comes off the foreground and the background, it's just amazing, dude. The shading was perfect. Uh, we do get a little bit of a reveal towards the end where, where Ken ends up revealing his name to ISA. Throughout the entire episode, ISA was like, hey, I can't die yet. Or, hey, I'm looking for my Ken Yuka, Yuka Kura, I think. I'm sorry, I just butchered that. Uh, but basically a Japanese actor, a masculine Japanese actor, apparently. At the end of the episode, we find out that Ken has the same exact name. And ISA's heart ends up skipping a few beats. And we have a cool explosion of fireworks behind her to show that, you know, she might be uh, falling for love. And that's exactly what the last episode was called. That's how love starts, you know. You can definitely tell they have good chemistry, especially the way they were bantering off each other. I'm actually a really big fan of this dynamic. Ken's a really sweet kid. He ends up taking off all of his clothes. That way, Ayase is, isn't exposed or vulnerable. And she feels safe, right? And that way she travels you know, fully clothed because again, there's just that weird scene. And to me, something like that shows chivalry. And to me, chivalry is what makes a man. So, you know, him being chivalrous towards Ayase there at the end was um, definitely a great display of affection. And I think she definitely felt that. But yeah, oh my God, dude, I just cannot get over how much of a spectacle this is as far as color and the way that Ken was kind of transforming through the phone. Really looking forward to the rest of the show. This may not be one of those things where, you know, I can theorize that far ahead just because of how crazy it is. and. This episode alone took so many turns, but I am looking forward to it. I'm really curious to see how much more color we get. Um, I theorized a little bit in the last episode on the projection of the show since they really emphasized transformation. So with the aliens transforming out of like the Russian nesting doll form into their alien form and with Ken transforming through the phone, you know, bones cracking, his head turning around, tweaking, you know, turbo granny crawling over the ceiling and her kind of transformation out of the shadows. And I feel like this show is going to be really transformation heavy and I think they can pull it off well just because of how the animation is designed. Like it's nothing too intricate. 
but because the color theory works so well and how they're nailing the glow and shading, I really feel like it'll work to their benefit with the simple animation style when it comes to transformations like this because you know, if the, if the more intricate the design, the harder it is going to be to, you know, get every moving piece to transform. But for something like this, where the animation style stays relatively simple, with the glow and shading, I really feel like they can pull off a cool spectacle, as we saw with, I guess, a, I guess it was kind of a fight scene right there towards the end. Um, yeah, ISA deals a nasty kick. I feel like that's going to be her signature move. We saw it twice. And when ISA was in danger, Ken started to snap a little bit. So I definitely think that's going to be Ken's trigger when it comes to like powering up or transforming. I think it's ISA being in trouble. And uh, I think it'll be vice versa, right? Because if they do like each other, then they're going to want to protect each other. But yeah, uh, guys, the last episode was so good. I'm really curious to see in this episode if we follow through with what Ken was saying about how he has to go back to the tunnel to get his weenie because I guess that's the only thing that's preventing Turbo Granny from leaving. Gosh, bro, I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. T Turbo Granny from leaving his body. Apparently she has his weenie, whatever that means. I don't, <laughs> I don't even know. But with all that being said, without further ado, that is all the notes I have over the last episode. Um, I'm, I'm just excited. I'm just intrigued. It's, it's kind of nice and a little bit refreshing going into the next episode, just like knowing that I'm just going to have my expectations turned on their head. I think that's what I like about this. And I know that it's going to be a lot of fun despite the absurdities. All right. So with all that being said, without further ado, let's jump right into that's a space alien, ain't it? Oh yeah. And Ken's voice actor is Tanjiro. Yeah. You can definitely hear it in the last episode. And now I can't unhear it. Bro, this turbo granny has to relax. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Yeah, is it because, like, that's who she wants to go for, but Ken wouldn't be the type of guy that she would go for? I think she knows, though, obviously. For heart skipping a beat. Okurun, okay. Yeah, what? <laughs> Again, is it just because she associates that with, like, her dream guy? Okay. <laughs> Damn, he really just crop dusted her, eh? That's... I'm really gonna have to eliminate my expectations. <laughs> this is definitely not gonna be a normal show. Poor Ken. His glass is shattered. We get to meet, uh... Another granny? Heard? Oh, is that like a... Like a warding, like a warding spell, or <laughs> keeps spirits out. Um, yeah, like a. A warding barrier. Yep. Poor Ken, just getting the rough end of the stick. <laughs> Damn, so that that curse just is like fiending to come out. Like he left and closed the door for a second. Yeah, he needs to be like held 24-7. Yeah, he's gotta get a grip on this. <laughs> Okay, so literally took his weenie. <laughs> I thought it was like maybe a little bit of a figure of speech, or I don't even know what they were trying to. <laughs> okay, heard. Oh my lord, dude. His weenie's been robbed. Wow. It's so sweet. Ken, you're loved, man. We'll all be your friend. Well, Ken, now you have Turbo Granny with you, right? So, you're no longer alone, man. <laughs> Not Turbo Granny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
yeah. Here's the here's the banter. Oh shit. Dude, yeah, something's definitely followed them. Oh, true. No way we get another fight this early. <laughs> oh shit, King, you're gonna have to transform, dude. Mm. Oh shit. Domain expansion. Yeah. <laughs> What? Is that blood? Yeah, okay. It was blood. Tanjiro, use Hinokami. You got this. What? So what, the granny made a deal with this thing to keep the talisman up? Oh, it's literally the curse that's on the talisman. <laughs> Bro, this is so sick. It's everything's in black and white now. Banana organ. Same from the last episode. What is up with banana organs and weenies, man? Okay, so they're somehow related. <laughs> oh man. I wonder how strong Turbo Granny is in comparison to this big ass thing. Nice. You got this, ISA. Now nah, we're about to do, be a dynamic duo for real. Let's go. Bro, that's so epic. Yeah, I'm like that emphasis on a transformation. It's so sick. Ooh! Bro, that looks... Oh, damn! Dude, that's actually epic as fuck. <laughs> Dude, he's completely different. For the flames, like, off the... The hoodie and the hair. For the mask. Oh my god, now he's about to fuck this thing up. Oh yeah. Oh, it's wraps. Dude, I love the red and the white and black. <laughs> well, we know Turbo Granny's fast, the way she was just able to run around that tunnel. Oh, come on. Bro, I love that design. It's so unique. I've never seen anything like it. Yeah. Like, coughed up blood like he's taking a toll. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense. Looks like ISA is going to have to to step up here. It's time to peek with some chi. Let's go. Oh. Yeah, she is a genius. Is that what it wants? That's actually crazy. 
Oh, it's the <laughs> definitely personality change. Oh, oh, dude, that's so that's so sweet. Oh. Bro, no way she lives. I mean, obviously she's gonna live, but like, she should be dead. <laughs> Call him out. Talk your shit. Let's go. <laughs> now she's about to peek. Damn, bro, she's she's tanking those. Wow. Nah, dude, she is actually a thousand IQ. Bro, yeah, no kidding, she's a genius. Bro, yeah, her getting beat was calculated. Wow. Damn, I gotta give it to her, man. I would've... I would have never thought about that. In a pinch, too. Under pressure. Nice. Bro, that's crazy. So we got speed, power, brain, determination, her conviction. Oh, yeah. Now, nah, this is going to be a cracked duo. Yeah, I was about to say, if it's got to be 24-7, that's probably a pain to have to deal with. Yeah, it's like fiery. Just like Tanjiro, funny enough. Well, I guess he did kind of use Hinokami, right? He's got like a... Had like fire come off his hoodie. Oh, shit. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah. Bro, that thing is crazy looking. Damn, and that's the cliffhanger. Yeah, that's too crazy of a cliffhanger for them to just not pick it up right where, right where they left off. Guys, this episode was really good, too. Again, I'm a huge fan of the way that they're doing their color. Even in this fight scene, it was purely black and white, yet they were still able to nail the glow. Like, look at this coming from the ground. Like, the shading's perfect under the eyes. Like, above the cheekbones and under the eyes to show depth. You know, above the, the glasses and under the eyebrows to show like how deep set his eyes are and same for her as far as above the cheekbones yeah dude they absolutely kill the glow and i especially liked in this fight scene that the only color was for ken dude and this transformation is so sick dude it's like fire we saw the red streaks down his face in the last episode but he's got like red and white hair dude this transformation was so sick the smoke clears dude the sound effects too Bro, the mask is so epic. Bro, nah, this shot is so clean. Bro, the eyes too, the eyes change. It's like a fully confident Ken. The hair goes hard, it's fiery. It's like fire off the coat. And when like that initial transformation hit, it almost kind of like, the splatter almost kind of looks like that of a lava lamp. You know, and of course a lava lamp is abstract because not a single time will like the goop ever form the same, right? It'll always be different. And I do like how, you know, if they're going for an abstract piece here or something along those lines it gives off the lava lamp or like the the goopy it's like a gloopy fiery transformation dude the mask is so tough and it's got these like red things up the side which gives it really good shape and it gives perfect structure to the face shape and his hair too yeah and the hoodie on fire nah dude this transformation like that's what they nailed this episode and the last episode it's the way that they execute like there's nothing crazy animation wise about this scene it's just glow shading depth the way that they use their color and the way that they animate simplicity, it's its done so well. Bro, nah, this is actually epic. <laughs> See, even the expression with the eyebrows. And I don't know if you guys caught that, but the sound effect as like he, he settles and he drops. 
Oh. You can feel the weight. Bro, I love that. I'll be honest. I'm actually I'm actually blown away. I wasn't expecting. I saw the trailer and you know, people were like, yeah, you know, man, like it's really cool to look at. And it's abstract. And, you know, a part of me was like, all right, that's just them kind of wanting to be, I guess, unique or, you know, uh, it's, it's artistic or it's different, which makes it cool, which isn't always the case. But, dude, they're actually <laughs> I'm pleasantly surprised they're they're delivering. You know, the sound effects are nice. The way that they're like the color theory, the shadows, the depth, you know, things that I look for in an anime. They're absolutely nailing. And of course, Tanjiro's voice actor is amazing. Yeah, this shot right here where he looks up at like. This is just, this is just beautiful. Like this is such a clean shot. Most of these shots are done so well. Yeah, but he coughs up blood. Like bro, even this, like the lines on the nose, the lines on the forehead to show his expression. They've been nailing that too, expression. But yeah, ISA is a thousand IQ. Also cool transformation. Like, and I also love that with, with these transformations as well. Even in the last episode, it's not like, a glow bubble around him or like a glow orb or you know it doesn't transition the scene yeah his entire personality changes it's like of course like the overpowered white-haired depressive character or like you know the chill laid back maybe not depressive but nonchalant of course like your overpowered main character has to be nonchalant or else he's just not badass but yeah he, he's definitely sick with it he's definitely clean he definitely doesn't have a grip on it right because he transformed there at the end of the episode and once isa fell asleep so isa has to keep him under control 24 7 which is actually kind of crazy i think the only way obviously that ken's gonna be able to fix this is if he goes and gets his weenie which by the way yes is literal she literally took his weenie towards the beginning of the episode when they were in isa's house he looks down in his pants and just doesn't see anything which is just crazy yeah so she literally took his weenie forgot to put the talisman back they make the connection or they say that aliens and spirits have some kind of correlation together you know where there's activity with one there's activity with another um which is interesting i don't really know how to theorize about that i guess that would kind of be the magnet going forward so so because ken has turbo granny because isa has chi unlocked and is able to use like a spiritual power they're kind of like a magnet to all of these aliens and curses or or spirits so that's what's gonna be i guess our episode by episode challenger instead of us just going on adventures they'll probably come to us but i'm sure we're gonna have to go to some locations i think it's gonna be a lot like the last episode in regard to them both going somewhere that has these things but because they possess these powers or you know he's cursed and she has chi that it'll actually bring them out because obviously the normal population wouldn't come across them um or else everyone would kind of be cursed like this but basically the left arm goes down or he's out and he ends up standing back up and doesn't go out and of course isa uh isn't too crazy about that she purposely gets beaten into the wall she's a thousand iq uh ends up going past the tory gate so she's able to bring back the talisman and i guess reseal him the first gigabrain thing that she said was how he's like setting up in a sumo stance so you know maybe you have to beat him like a sumo wrestler which was you know again a thousand iq because I didn't catch that. I kind of just saw it as him attacking them. Yeah, she's very perceptive. Obviously, we saw in the last episode, she was able to self-reflect over the fact that she was being mean to Ken. And, and she did look at her own actions and she did reflect on that. So she's definitely perceptive, definitely higher IQ. Uh, I, I'm kind of getting the grip that Ken is our occult club, goofball, like nerdy type that is bashful, shy, and a kind of panicky, right? Like he... Maybe not, I don't think inexperience is the right word, but also maybe. But he never seems to be okay. He seems to always be in a fit. Um, but, you know, she's kind of there to calm him down physically and literally. So I think it's fitting that his other persona with this curse is like a real depressive, nonchalant, like, badass. Because, you know, the contrast is so clear and is so sharp. And ISA kind of being just the girl that's done with it all. And it's just like, alright, let's just fuck some shit up. You know, take this badass kick to the face. And, you know, let me use my 1000 IQ brain to get us past the Tory gate. Like, her getting beat was purely calculated. And, and I didn't even think about it in the moment. But, you know, she could have escaped, right? Like, she gotten beat into the wall. And she was like, no, 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 I'm fine. And then continued to let the spirit beat her. But it was just to purely get her past the Tory gate. Which, I gotta give it to her, man. Again, I, like I said in the reaction, I, I wouldn't have thought about that. Massive brain. Especially if the Tory gate was pressed up against the wall. Like what Ken said. Like, it was just a part of the wall. And you wouldn't be able to put the talisman tag back on there but yeah they end up escaping but of course isa just took a crazy beating so she's gassed she's tapped out she also has been keeping ken under control 24 7 so she's wiped out she passes out and now ken 
is a full 100% turbo granny. Now, considering how they're nailing color theory so perfectly, it almost kind of makes me wonder if even the direction of the color of the shot is intentional, right? Like in this fight against the sumo spirit, everything was black and white, and that was obviously intentional to kind of show that they were in, you know, like a domain. But now that we have Ken transformed into Turbo Granny, everything's red, like fully red. Now, I'm not sure if that's to represent the fact that he's 100% Turbo Granny and he's lost himself. Because in the last episode, we saw, you know, the phone go red. We saw the entire tunnel go red to resemble the fact that Turbo Granny's, you know, been let loose. So, so I'm curious if the entire frame being red is just to show that, yeah, Ken is no longer in there. And like, you know, this is bad news. I'm, I'm, I'm sure that's exactly what it is. But yeah, guys, this was an amazing episode. I, I think Ken's quickly getting a grip on the power. Um, I'm not sure if this is just something that he has to feel out or something by trial and error. Again, maybe that's like what I said with the trigger being ISA because, because he was transforming into Turbo Granny and then once the sumo wrestler was coming in to actually hit them, knowing that ISA would get hit, right? Like he's got the, the Granny perm, it's long. But once the hit actually comes and we see, yeah, we pan over to ISA and she's scared. Yeah, 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 to save the day. So he transforms. It really does seem like, you know, his love for ISA is the trigger that gets him to access a higher power which he has done and yeah it looks super sick he can only control it for a little bit is what it seems dude this black and white and red is fresh yeah bro they nail the color again the expressive lines the shading the depth oh my god dude like this shot man dude yeah I i'm crazy about this design i'm crazy about the show and the sound effects too yeah i mean i feel like i can go on and on about it because like it just perfectly nails like what it means to have like an abstract art form and for it to not also be shit right like I feel like you can really, like I said in the last episode, but it's so easy to botch something that's abstract, but, and they do a great job. Dude, I'm gonna have a field day with the thumbnail, man. This is gonna be so fun. I feel like this is gonna be a great show for thumbnails too, because I, as you could tell, if you look at my my YouTube page, you know, I'm, I'm big on color and I'm big on the glow reflection and, you know, color theory and how like colors can come together and it be visually pleasing. So yeah, I feel like I'm gonna have a field day with these frames, man. Uh, but yeah, guys, that's all the notes I have over this past episode. It was really good. Yeah, as far as theories go for the next one, I think he's gonna transform. I think ISA is gonna stay asleep. I think Ken is gonna have some like internal monologue or some kind of like internal challenge where he's like really trying to get a grip on it without her because obviously she can't be there for him 24 seven throughout the show. I think he's gonna have to go through some kind of mental hoop and get a grip on it a little bit. I don't think he's gonna have full control 100%. Okay, so it just dawned on me that he has to get his weenie back in order to get rid of the spirit, but it seems like he's able to develop the power without having his weenie back because if that's the case and he ends up developing this power and ends up mastering it, why would you ever want? Well, I mean, I guess you would, <laughs> it's kind of a tough thing, right? If you, if, if, you know, a genie or someone came to you and said, hey, you can have insane spiritual powers in exchange for your weenie, which one would you take? That's a good question. I'm sure having like spiritual powers like that and you know, being insanely strong feels really good. You can also save people too for your weenie. Damn, that's a good ass question. You guys let me know, would you exchange your weenie for spiritual powers? And girls, you can answer this too if you want. I think I would. I think I'd get rid of my weenie for spiritual powers. And especially if I had a sick mask like this and had like fire coming out of me and you know, I was able to save people. I feel like that'd be really cool. Also being able to perform feats that no one else can, like the speed. Now granted, his human body can't handle it, but I'm sure throughout the show, he's gonna be able to get a grip on that. So assuming I had mastered these spiritual powers in exchange for my weenie, I would. I think I would do that, that'd be sweet. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just a, I mean, come on, it's just a weenie. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, you guys let me know. I'm a, I might hold a poll in the Discord, but you guys comment below. Would you exchange your weenie for <laughs> spiritual powers? Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I loved it. I, again, I'm really enjoying the visuals, man. Like, this show has been absolutely killing it. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this episode, I have the full reaction on Patreon. I also have a Discord. Both of those links will be in the description below. And if you guys enjoyed, please consider liking and subscribing. I would greatly appreciate it. All right, hope y'all all oh, have a good one.